child advocates are reaching out in new ways to find adoptive parents for thousands of children waiting in foster care. In Bridgeport, Connecticut, a single woman and her adoptive daughter represent one family breaking all molds and changing the picture of how adoption looks and what it means. In New Haven, Connecticut, National Adoption Day includes an after-court party that adopted families return to year after year. He's been with us uh, two and a half years. Yeah. At the celebration, the assortment of guests paints a striking picture of how adoption is changing. Experts say age, wealth, and marital status no longer screen out candidates who want to adopt a child. We always have to look at what is in the child's best interest, and that should be the guiding point. Es el Social worker Yvette Negron was nearly 40 and single when she decided to adopt. I am professional, I am mature and successful. I thought I can handle, you know, having my own family. Yvette's relatives, including 22 brothers and sisters, welcomed her decision. But friends' reactions varied. Some people wondered if something was wrong, even though they didn't tell me if something was wrong with me, that I was not able to have children. She also detected a lot of fear about the kinds of kids who come from foster care. They turn into killers or they've been, prob been problems to their families. That's a myth, that's a misconception. One of many misconceptions that child welfare expert Ray Torres says stops people from adopting. But it didn't stop Yvette. One day, very early in the morning, I got a phone call and the social worker called me to tell me that a child has been identified, a girl. That was Patty, <laughs> right there. For Yvette, it was love at first sight. But for the 14-month-old baby, adjusting to a new home was tough. Because she was raised by other families, she has experienced losses and just too many changes in her life. And for the first time, Yvette found herself worrying too. She was placed uh, in my home as a legal risk uh, adoption, meaning that the parental rights had not been terminated. That was very hard, very, very, very difficult for me. Even after the adoption went through, she remained anxious about losing the daughter she called Isabel. Fears that I guess every adopted parent Half of my child being identified and taken away. Are you ready? <laughs> you. Love you, mommy. For her child's sake, Yvette overcame her own anxiety to contact oh. Isabel's birth family. So, how was your day, baby? Today, the Negrones are part of a growing trend towards open adoption. An open adoption allows a child to have the peace of mind to know that they go into a new family who cares for them, but that does not mean that they're not loyal to their birth family. This is my family. This is me and my brother. Isabel enjoys a relationship with her birth mother and half-siblings. She is also learning about her diverse heritage, which includes Mexican, Puerto Rican, and Hungarian ancestors. That was your first trip to Puerto Rico when you were meeting uh, her birth mother. It turned out to be the best thing that I have done. Because it gave Isabel a sense of joy, knowing her birth mother still loves her. Sometimes I would be sad away from my family because I was adopted. But then when I grow up, I know what it means. Every child deserves to live with their truth. And she says all children deserve families they can depend on. We'd like to extend special thanks to Casey Family Services, the Alliance for Children's Rights, and the families for sharing their stories with us. For more information about adopting a child, here are some websites and phone numbers to call.